Thank goodness, Kieran. We are now live on Facebook. Okay. Hey. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Whizzle. We're just waiting for a few more people to join us. Uh, do we want to get started introducing the team, Ken? Or yeah. would you like to wait a little longer? Yeah, okay, this is great. introduce the team of a while. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> welcome to our uh, Whistle presentation tonight. This is a special invitation for early investors to come and find out what an amazing opportunity is available right now with uh, with Whistle you know, shares being being offered at this very early stage. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. So my name is Abiti Catherine Pass, and we have some of the other Whistle team members with us tonight. Obviously, not everyone. We have Ken Wong, who is the co-founder and CEO of Whistle. Hi. And yeah. we have Francis Hoare, who's the CTO, the Chief Technical Officer. <laughs> and, we <also> have, <laughs> and we also have Julia Buchholz, who is the uh, CMO of Whistle. She's the Chief Marketing Officer. Hi. <laughs> so this is really exciting because it's the first time that we are um, speaking to also an Australian audience. Well, not the first time, but specifically we wanted to uh, it's a global company, so we're wanting to present the opportunity into different markets. So welcome, everyone, whether you're listening live or whether you're going to be coming in a little bit later and joining us to listen to the recording. Tonight, we're going to be giving a very short introduction into Whistle. I say short because there's so, so much that the platform has to offer. So we're going to be covering some of the basics. And as we mentioned before, we'll be extending an invitation to become an early shareholder in this very promising tech startup. Now, what's really exciting about this tech startup is the fact that Microsoft, uh, that, that it's been voted by Microsoft for startups as a premium qualified startup. That means that there's a, a, a fairly hefty uh, prize reward of 120 US. And this is, this is the sort of... Um, strength behind this brand it's really going from strength to strength and it's a very very exciting time to be able to get involved so when we think about being human beings basically we all act in one or two ways we either move away from pain uh, or we move towards pleasure and usually it's in that in that um, order so say for example you need to lose weight and you need to do exercise most of us in that category will say, well, I think I'll start tomorrow and I might just go and have a coffee instead. So we'll go away from what's unpleasant and we'll go towards what is pleasant. And this is our basic human drive. It's a, it's a primal driver and it's behind almost every buying decision that we make. If you really look at things and uncover things at a deep level, that's, how, that's what our drive is. If I'm experiencing difficulty in life and I can't find satisfaction, I can't find a way to solve my problems, I become very frustrated and I'm not in a very healthy buying space. When I'm offered the opportunity to have my problems or my issues or my challenges resolved and fixed, that gives me a really positive feeling. I get the dopamine hit into the brain and I say, yeah, I love these guys and I want to do more. And effectively, that's what Whistle is looking to offer. Now, I want to tell you a really quick story. This happened to me yesterday, and I promise I won't be too long. <laughs> I was riding my bike to work, and I go and I cycle to the station, and I leave it in this bike cage, and it's safe and all of that. Well, I went to use my swipe card, and the swipe card didn't work. So I was like, oh, wow, that's, un that's unusual. And I was, it was a hot day, and I was in the sun, and I was feeling stressed out and a little bit flustered. So then I ring, try and, I'd ring the organization and the organization couldn't answer the phone at that time. It was too busy. So, <laughs> so then I had to do so, an application online and then the website went down. So you can imagine my frustration drip, drip, drip was just getting higher and higher. So then a chat bot came and I'm like, oh, I don't really like talking to chat bots. But anyway, let's see if this, this, this robot can help me. So then I ended up getting to speak to a human and then the chatbot kept dropping out. So I would have a conversation, I'd get to a certain level and then I'd lose. So I, I'm, my frustration is getting higher and higher. I'm not in a buying mood, I'm in a very negative space, I can promise you. <laughs> and then she said to me, the chatbot, she said, go and see the station master, couldn't find a station master. 
it just went on and on and on. It was like, at the end, I could count that there were 10 different things that went wrong. And I had four different ways of connecting with this organization, online, via a chatbot, via a, a, a telephone helpline, and speaking to a physical person who I couldn't find on the station. Even so, I never, I was there for over an hour running very late for work and I still couldn't get my problem fixed. The only way that I could get my bike into the bike cage was to wait for someone else to come along. He opened the door, I put my bike inside. That was illegal, I wasn't supposed to do that, but that was the only way I could solve the problem by myself. And I went to work very, very frustrated with transfer with the organization. So that gives you an idea of when people are experiencing, and we all have those days, when we're experiencing uh, frustration and anger, it's like the more automated our systems become, the less human contact we have, and the more frustration and anxiety that we experience. And as we said at the beginning, if humans are wanting to basically go from a, a, an, un, an uncomfortable situation to a comfortable situation, then at the moment in most countries and most cultures, we're constantly being challenged. We're not getting that pleasant feeling. We're not getting the dopamine hit. And I believe that this is exactly what Whizzle does. It provides that solution or at least a pathway towards a solution where the customer feels good. All right, so how can we fix these kinds of problems that we face in everyday life? Who's going to fix the problem? I mean, I spoke to four different entities yesterday and still no one could fix my problem. And who'll take responsibility and not hang up or have the website go down or, or disconnect the chat? <laughs> like, we need to be able to have someone at the end of the day who's accountable and who's there to serve us, to bring us uh, a feeling of positivity. So as I mentioned before, the closer that we get to... Uh, the closer we get to automated systems, while they have lots of positive aspects, a negative aspect can be being held on the, on the phone for a long time, trying to get the internet, for, for example, connected when it's disconnected and they tell you to go online and <laughs> make an application. And you're like, well, I don't have the internet, so how can I go online? So there's so many times when we get super frustrated in modern day life. And how can we have this situation alleviated? How can we fix it? So for me, Whizzle creates a, I'm just going to move this because I can't see the text. For me, it's really important because Whizzle provides solutions. It helps people connect through effective feedback channels. You can get your issues fixed. You can experience more satisfaction. And when, whoa, why is that not moving? Okay. When we feel satisfied, we buy more, we purchase more. We have a good feeling, we walk away, we, we talk about organizations in a positive way. You know, like if somebody says, what's your favorite pizza place? You'll always go, oh yeah, there's this one down here. And, and that's basically, you know, free marketing that organizations are getting because we had a positive experience there. This is what Whizzle can do for your business. All right, so let's take an example of Whizzle or, or let's take an example within the property sector. Uh, we're looking at the fact that Whizzle is a location-based social feedback platform. It's working within smart cities, within companies, and within neighbourhoods. It's helping to bring resolution where there is conflict. And most of us experience conflict on some level uh, all through our lives every day. We can have resolution to problems, to feedback, to complaints. It creates an effective communication channel between three parties – me, in this case, the user, I was having to try and find a place to store my bicycle and I couldn't. Uh, the company or the organization, which in this case is, uh, was this transport company. And the, and the person who provides the fix, the, first, the service provider who fixes the problem. And in this case, it might have been the station master. All right, so there was a, there's a place in Sydney called Mascot Towers. For those of you that are not familiar, this um, was a place that was plagued with problems from the time that it was built. Uh, we had uh, structural issues, there was cracking that was appearing in the walls. Uh, the place had to be evacuated last year. 
all of the tenants and owners of the properties, so the residents had to leave. A lot of them had nowhere to go. It really hit the news and it was a really big deal. And what happened, there were significant cracks that were discovered in the building structure. And they were basically afraid that the building was gonna collapse on top of people. So um, the residents were told to leave and they're still yet to return to the building. So what we have here, there were problems that needed fixing. Tenants and residents, owners, were reporting these problems. For whatever reason, it would appear that the, the complaints were going un, uh, un, not unnoticed. I think they, they, were, they were being taken into account, but nobody was taking action to fix these things. It was like everybody was completely confused in the email chain and all the incoming and no, we've got to wait for this person to take action and all of that. So in this case, we had structural problem feedback. It was if it had been posted, if, for example, this community had existed on the Whizzle app, and we'll talk more about how Whizzle, Whizzle works in a moment. But let's imagine an online community. Everyone who works in or, or lives in this, um, in, in this apartment complex are a part of the community. And somebody takes a photograph and they post and they can say, hey, there's a crack down here in the basement. And because of the technology that Whizzle are implementing in the back end, we can actually see proof that that's a true photograph. And there is no way that anyone can remove at this stage that post. So it can't be manipulated, it can't be changed, it can't be updated. And that's generally what we can see happening on other social media platforms. So what can happen then is the admin responds to the community post and that they could actually have fixed these issues or at least shown the residents and the owners and the tenants that actions were uh, put, being put into place to address the issue. Instead, that wasn't the case. And we see that the evacuation had to take place and it's cost people a lot of money. It's given the building company a terrible reputation. It's basically been a complete disaster story and it's still that way now. I want you to imagine for a moment the insurance implications of this situation. If, for example, we had had a system where everything could be recorded, actions taken, uh, responses um, uh, unalterable, so they can't be tampered with, you can imagine that then the insurance premiums would reflect the actual issues that exist instead of, for example, insurance companies not wanting to cover the damage and the tenants and owners having to cough up a lot more literally millions I think the last thing I read it was over 53 million dollars for the uh, for the repairs to take place here so really if you look at this whistle is protecting all parties the tenants and the residents the property managers and the service providers by creating a feedback channel where people actually can post something it gets acted on the service provider fixes the problem, posts another photograph to prove that the problem has been fixed and a rating is given. And as I said, we're gonna go into that a little bit more. But I did wanna to talk to you about authentic feedback. And this is one of the key issues that Whizzle is addressing. And it's really, really exciting. Whizzle is able to provide assurance. And this, as I mentioned before, is backed by various kinds of technology, including geotagging and, uh, and blockchain. And geotagging is basically where there's uh, coding or information backend that proves where a photograph was taken. So if a person posts a photograph within the ASL, within the Whizzle app using the in-app camera, then that will record the exact location of where that was taken. So there's no way that somebody could fake it and take a photo of a broken building down the road and say, well, this is Mascot Towers. It would actually show the location to be there. And this means that feedback and photographs used within the feedback posts are authentic. Now, we know that most of us as residents, whether we live in high rise apartments or whether we live in group homes or whether we, whether we live in strata titles, we, we are uh, community members and we have feedback, we have issues and we have problems that need to be dealt with. Even if we're not in any of those structures and in a private home, we're talking about the property market just to keep it into one industry. But Whizzle, the application of Whizzle can be seen across a myriad of industries from 
you know, we won't even go there because it'll be too much information. But um, it's important to remember that WISL is bringing all these different parties together in either an open public uh, community or a closed private community like we do on Facebook, but that they give each party the opportunity to communicate with full transparency. And the transparency, part of that is the fact that the information can't be erased or changed or altered by, uh, by admin. So this brings openness and accountability. Sometimes personal responsibility can be a really dirty word. And say, for example, in the case of the mascot tower situation, it would appear, and I say that because I'm not part of the legal body behind it, but it would appear that there are no bodies that are actually taking responsibility for the problems. Uh, so we've got accountability of each party, meaning that WISL is providing a way of opening communication channels, but the assurance that they're giving that it's backed by these technologies, as I mentioned previously. All right, so the concept. If we look at the centralized approach, which is the box up the top, we can see that we've got the user or the, or the say the service, say for example, the tenant, if we're talking about mascot towers, and we've got the people providing um, the towers or the management here. And hopefully everybody puts something in the middle and hopefully something comes out. There's no guarantee, there's no transparency. You send off an email, you don't know if anyone's actually gonna read it or if they're gonna action it. You, you, we get caught in this loop where we don't actually ever experience that dopamine hit of satisfaction. I mean, we might, it's not to say it never happens, but we often feel disgruntled. With the, with the whistle approach, we can see that the, uh, the user is giving feedback to the management or to the vendors in this case. Those posts are being backed up as we mentioned before by the use of something called blockchain technology. And that is creating uh, a means by which the information can't be changed or altered. Um, that's reducing, and we'll talk more about this, that's reducing fake, the, the whole massive critical problem of uh, fake feedback, fake um, submissions, fake ratings. So Whistle is all about creating harmonious communities. If you really look at it overarching, and we go back to those original uh, slides about wanting to feel good. If we have a disgruntled community where nothing works and things are breaking down and there's no one to fix the problems and there's just chaos and confusion, that is not a fertile space for humans to feel good and happy and included. It's also not a fertile space to really do good things for the planet. If, however, we can start building communities where people's voice gets acknowledged, their issues get heard, people take action on what needs to happen. And eventually, you know, that very same person who's posted that issue can create a, uh, can give a rating talking exactly, um, giving feedback on how, how good the service that was provided was. Then what we're doing is we're actually working to create happier and happier and more harmonious uh, communities. And that's one aspect of this business model that I really, really love. It's basically, the happier we are, the better service we get, the more we're going to rave about a particular business, the better business, uh, the, the more profits at the end of the day that business is going to be experiencing. So by being good actors, by being good players, we're not only going to profit in a, in a monetary way, but we're also going to profit in terms of humanity. I mean, I might be getting a bit romantic here, but it's one of the aspects that I really, really like. Now, it is a community focused platform. And we know you could probably say, well, hey, on Facebook, you can create a community as well. I mean, what's the difference? You can create a private group, you can create a public group. That goes to show that Whistle is actually very similar in some ways to Facebook because it's so easy to use. We can all navigate Facebook, no problem. Most of us have an account. Most of us belong to groups. Some of us are admins and we can do all the things that admins do. But Whistle is kind of different in the sense that you get a whole heap of data. If your customers are giving you feedback and you're resolving that feedback and you've got that, that, those three parties involved here, the customer, the business owner, the service provider who's gonna fix the issue, what you're doing apart from creating harmonious uh, communities, whether they're online or physical, you're actually getting a whole heap of really valuable data about your customers. You're getting data about what their problems are. You're getting data 
factor about how you can serve them better. And ultimately that's gonna serve you to create a far more high quality business. Now, the other thing is that within Wizzle, and uh, Julia is gonna speak a little bit more about this later, within Wizzle, we have a dashboard and that's, that gives a whole host of business tools to business owners that are creating communities uh, within, within the app, which is not available on other social platforms. And of course, the other amazing thing about Wizzle, and I'm mentioning it again, is that we're using blockchain and other forms of technology to avoid the manipulation of data, to avoid, shall we say, uh, you know, this fake accounts, fake feedback, fake ratings. So some of the problems that exist on other social pl platforms are exactly this. You can open as, as many email accounts as you can open is equal to the number of uh, social media accounts that you can open. And then you can go in and give a company a really good review or a really poor review. And that may or may not reflect the truth. In fact, a lot of people are able to give a review and they've never had any interaction whatsoever with the business in the first place. And we all know that a damning review creates a poor reputation and a poor reputation is very hard to undo in the community. Wizzle provides a number of solutions. So first of all, one mobile registration, one phone number registration, one account. And it's pretty difficult to have hundreds of phones and to create hundreds of account, accounts. So most people have one, maybe they have two, but on the whole, one user, one account. Uh, the feedback process is transparent. So I make the post, I say, hey, I couldn't park my bike today. Here's a picture of me trying to, to, trying to sign in or trying to swipe my card. Uh, then somebody comes along, fixes the problem and posts a picture of me being able to get in with a big cheesy grin on my face. Happy customer walk away saying, isn't this company amazing? They really care about me. So the, the process is transparent because we're using uh, those geotagged photographs to prove both the location and the fact that the issue has been resolved. Now, the only person who's able to create a rating about that organization and to give reflection about how they feel after the service was supposedly provided and the resolution was reached is the original person who posted. So you can't have multiple ratings from all these other parties who have opinions about that business. Only one person can create that rating and that's the person who posted in the first place. And once again, we know that satisfied customers are spending more at that business. They're becoming return customers, they're loyal, they're gonna give us free advertising, they're probably gonna talk about us on other social media platforms in a very positive way. And that's gonna drive more traffic to our door. Uh, so we talked about the fact that on the Whistle platform, business owners can easily collect customer feedback, reviews and ratings, suggestions and opinions. And with this collected data, they can generate useful data insights and this improves their business. And they do this via, as we said before, the Whistle management dashboard within the app. So we've got mobile registrations, we've got transparent feedback and we've got our rapporteurs ratings or the rating of the person who posted. So feedback is super important. I think we've touched on this in, in lots of different ways. It raises the integrity of the business within the community. And when the integrity is high, there is creating trust. And most of us online marketers know, including shop people know, people will buy from you if they know, like, and trust you. And if you create amazing service, when you do make a mistake or there is an issue, you act on that and you actually acknowledge their issue and you reward them by taking action and getting that issue resolved. That is really uh, fortifying the sense of trust and uh, well-being that we experience with that business. So we'll go back and give them more business. Through feedback, reviews and ratings, we're improving the uh, business, um, what's the word? We're improving the way we do business. And this is improving on, on a different level. So it's making the individual feel good. It's making the business person feel good. And ultimately it's creating more harmonious communities. And if we could create more harmonious communities on a worldwide scale, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that change the way we see the world? 
So the market size, this is where um, where Wizzle is looking to move um, in terms of its roadmap. So the target markets for the first phase of expansion are the mobile media, uh, mobile social media users in Malaysia, Australia, Singapore, and Thailand. And 132 million is that total available market. Yeah. And in terms of the roadmap, what we're going to be looking at from then on is um, go, moving into, oh, hang on, this, uh, sorry, then we've got the serviceable market, I'm sorry, and then we've got the uh, social media users. So we've got a massive market share in terms of business um, businesses and media, um, people that are using these um, social media are already on their phones, so they're absolutely used to, going to be absolutely used to using Wizzle because they're already um, they've already got the experience of managing other apps and um, the social media users. So I'm, I'm the active social media users. I might need you just to explain a little bit more about this at the end. Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Um, in Malaysia, so we, we've taken these statistics from Malaysia because at this point, Wizzle has absolutely exploded over there. And they have over 30,000 users that have already registered on the platform. So you can see there's a pretty interesting uh, over 20, 24.6 million social networking users. And in terms of communication app, you've got 27.8 million. So they're all things that most of us are pretty familiar with even here in Australia and in the US. WeChat is more uh, of something based in, in China, I believe. But even so, we can see that there's an awful lot of people using uh, social media. Now, in terms of the value proposition, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about what Wizzle is not. So sometimes people think, well, what's the difference, as we mentioned before, between, between Facebook and Wizzle? I mean, why, why can't I just um, do the same thing using other tools? It's not a social media platform. It's not a video or live streaming platform. And it's not just a feedback or review platform. So we've got all these different ones. We can go and leave a review on TripAdvisor, but we don't necessarily ever see anyone acting on that or giving us a reply or seeing that they've addressed the issue that we might have experienced while traveling, for example. So Wizzle is it's different. It's a location-based social feedback pl platform, but it's empowered by blockchain technology, which none of these are. And we'll look a little bit more into that now. If we look at some of the competitors, what is it that makes Wizzle so special? All right, so we've already talked about the fact that the feedback process is transparent. We're providing real-time progress and status, um, in, like updates. So we talked about giving a post and getting the feedback on the, uh, giving a post which is feedback and getting the response to that feedback from say management or um, business owners. And all of this is transparent within the community. All of us can watch and see, oh yeah, I had the same problem when I tried to store my bike. Oh yeah, look, they got it fixed. Awesome, now I know what to do, for example. Um, we provide also, as we mentioned, the in-app camera, which creates both a timestamp and location information. And this can be viewed by the business owner or the, or the admin of the um, online community within the app to clarify that it was actually happening at their store or in their location or at their block of flats in the case of say the mos mascot towers. There are lots of other tools there like a form creator, which can't be, which is not available on other, uh, on, on most other uh, social media platforms. And there's all sorts of business tools, all sorts of things for managing residential properties. You can, um, business owners can create communities in Wizzle to improve the communication and the collaboration with their customers. And especially if we think of it in just in this case, and there are many, many applications of Wizzle outside of property management, but let's have a look at that because it's a really juicy one. Property managers can create communities and they can communicate directly with their residents and the, um, the so both owners and tenants within there. And implementing blockchain technology minimizes, as we said before, the manipulation of that fake feedback and those fake ratings. So let's look a little bit more into how Wizzle actually works. 
super simple in reality. There are four steps. So first thing, I make a report. In this case, there's a broken lift and it, whoever it was couldn't get up. So they've taken a photograph using the app camera and that is able to um, identify exactly where that photograph was taken. And they've written here, okay, this elevator is not functioning. And so that would go straight to the admin and that post will reach, will have a hundred percent reach to all members of the, of the community. So when um, I'm on Facebook, it's hard to see all the, all the messages coming from all uh, the communities that I'm involved in. But in this case, everyone gets to see that information. The admin can act on that by responding and saying, okay, great, I'm, I can see that. Thank you for your um, post. I'm now going to organize a, a mechanic or some specialist to come out and fix it. So that takes us to stage three, which is resolution. And the lift is now functioning. And there's a photograph taken of that saying, okay, all done. The technician has been and gone. And the original person, Sam Schultz, or Sean Schultz, can then go in and give a rating, in this case, five star, and say, wow, fantastic job. Thank you very much. Now, this can go across all sorts of different levels. You can be um, reporting an issue in a house. You can be reporting an issue in a supermarket. There are so many different applications but it's particularly interesting in terms of property management. You can see once again, that the way that this is done, it's very difficult to create a fake rating because only the person doing the posting can do that rating, can give that uh, person the five stars or if it's poor quality, then less. And obviously the more stars you get, the better your uh, business reputation is and the more people come back to use your services. If you look at the um, existing feedback and rating systems, um, WISL is a, is a way more interactive and uh, authentic way to, to get feedback from your customers. Um, other, uh, other systems, including those, those ones that we mentioned over here, um, a lot of these ones, these feedback systems, they can be faked. Somebody can go in and give a fake positive or a fake negative rating. All right, so in terms of revenue, we've got, um, in September this year, we launched, we, we launched the first business model, and this is known as the Wizzle Premium Services. So I'm just going to zip over here. There are lots of different, there are three different levels. We're just going to look briefly at this level for now. This is the level that is related for, to property management specifically. You'll see that the uh, prices are listed in Malaysian ringgit, and um, some of these I've been able to go and translate into US dollars. But it's, it's a very reasonable amount per month. And in fact, earlier today, Ken was showing us some feedback on some other services that are similar com competitors within the property management sphere. And what WISL is offering and presenting and the tools that it's giving are far more powerful for a far more reasonable amount on a monthly level. But back over here, so we can see in the financial year of 2019, uh, the revenue um, was there in Malaysian ringgit. I did actually do some translations here, but most of you can go and check that out for yourselves. Um, and, it, and in 2020, we've also obviously, I mean, this is just so obvious, we really don't need to say it, but due to COVID-19, a lot of the expected expansion was uh, slowed down. So we're looking to um, 21 and 2022 to be much more expansive. I think that we will invite Ken to speak a little bit more about this towards the end of the presentation. All right, so one of our levels is the WISL Premium Services. And I'm sure that Ken can address that in a little bit more detail at the end as well. I heard him speak about it this morning and I got so excited about it, but I can't pretend to re, uh, you know, to, to transfer yeah, sure, that sure, question sure. across. Yeah, so actually uh, the, the Premium Services actually now, uh, we have a uh, few like for, for example, with is a pro for the property management. And then we do have another two uh, uh, premium service at this moment is uh, for uh, the SME, small medium enterprises or the business owner, and also for the development and construction. Right, and then, uh, yeah, so uh, a bit maybe you go to the next slide about the, the business model. Yeah, so actually this is our overview of our business model. So, uh, which is uh, verified your community as official accounts, 
and then uh, we serve premium services based on subscription basis and as well the commission uh, on service marketplace and also in advertisement <clears throat> Right. Okay, so so looking at the earnings on on um, advertisements, and um, so so there are all these different streams of income. And Ken was explaining to us also this morning that the verification of official accounts mm. is actually paid. So people are going to do a certain amount of KYC or know your customer, providing documentation in order to to prove the to verify the authenticity of their account, and that's part of the premium service level. And that is all that all attracts um, a payment, which sure. means that it's one of the various forms uh, or streams of income that uh, Wizzle is going to be generating. Uh, I'm just going to see if I've got any more notes to mention on that. Yeah, so we've got those four different areas, the verify your community, the Wizzle premium services, plus other services to be introduced, the commission on the service marketplace. So that means that when uh, when service uh, providers come in and do a job like fixing the lift, then uh, Wizzle will be able to take a percentage of that and obviously advertising. Or oh, the financial projection. Ken, would you like to address this one? Yeah. So actually, uh, uh, due, due to the COVID pandemic, right? So actually, uh, we have uh, projected our revenue will increase uh, exponentially in the year 2022, uh, okay, with the uh, uh, I think our revenue uh, will be increased uh, to 4.5 uh, million in 2022 and 8.7 million in 2023 and 18.8 million in 2024 and 27.4 million in 2025 in relation with our, our global expansion. All right, so you were yeah. saying there that we've got, you're expecting exponential growth and we've got the figures there that we can have a look at. And yeah. that is particularly like, like many businesses, uh, we've taken a bit of a hit this yeah. year, but things are looking better and better and better moving forward. All right, so the investors so far, we have the, um, the founder. So Ken is one of the co-founders, Ken, Ken Wong, and yeah. also Dato William Chang. And yeah. they have invested uh, an amount of 1,200,000 ringgit, in Malaysian ringgit. Um, but also Dat Datin Sharon is, um, is uh, Dato William Chan's spouse. She's one of the major shareholders. Um, earlier this year, it was very exciting. Uh, Wizzle received funding from the New Era Capital Partners and they're um, an early growth venture fund who have um, jumped in with a lot of excitement to be part of Wizzle. Um, and earlier still, we had uh, other investors, including Good Hope Century, Regal Worth, and TC Earth Solution. And I'm not even going to try and do the Malaysian bit there, Ken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the Bahad, okay. Yeah, yeah, that one, a... that one. PTYT, yeah. uh, PTYLTD in Malaysian. <laughs> we leave that. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> All right, we have a fabulous team. So this is all startups need to have a really, really solid team. And sometimes, you know, we can see that in the case of Whistle, we have a really, really solid leadership. Um, Francis and uh, Ken have worked together for 20 years. A lot of um, amazing experience and development of businesses and software development and computer systems. Uh, what, let's have a look. Sorry, I just want to make sure I get this right. Um, so they were previously developed a thing called Friendster Eye Cafe and Friendster Hotspot Solution. And they successfully rolled out in Malaysia um, and, and also Southeast Asian countries. So they really have had a wealth of experience in, in app development and online um, media engagement. Julia is our uh, CMO. She's based in Australia. She's got over 15 years of experience in business development, digital marketing, advertising within the media technology and blockchain industries, and a whole lot more to boot. And Rajesh, uh, he is a certified blockchain architect and developer, and one of the key architects that's um, in building India's own blockchain protocol, 1101. He's written many smart contracts and successfully deployed on the Ethereum mainnet, close to um, almost 50 million US dollars worth. So that is very impressive. So the team has a proven track record in, in, in Malaysia and Australia. And over the next five years, we're looking to expand across into other Southeast Asian countries, uh, but also to introduce other amazing and really exciting features such as a virtual event management system, 
uh, a, a service marketplace like the one we mentioned before where the service providers will come from within the WISL communities, a content filtering using artificial intelligence, a, a personal user reputation score and many, many more features. So the, the thought is, or the understanding is that with the expansion, with a strong team, with an original, uh, my, with an original um, business which is solving very real problems and it can be scaled across the whole world, this team is really set to take off. This business is really set to take off. So here we have the offer. Uh, the minimum target is uh, 500,000 Malaysian ringgit and the maximum is, is two and a half or 2,500,000. million five hundred thousand. We can see that the uh, price per share is 37.50 ringgit. And I believe in US dollars, that is around $9.23. Is that correct, Ken? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. So all, all of that information is there. Um, mm. We did have a question earlier about what the, um, what the valuation was. And we can see there the, the pre-fund raising valuation is, is 45,499,988, all right. Um, so with all these features and expansions, we believe that the WISL will, the valuation will be much higher than what it is today. The minimum investment in WISL is approximately uh, USD 460 or, uh, or 50 shares. So it, it's a really, really exciting time. And I am really urging people not to miss this opportunity to invest in WISL. I've been talking to people uh, in my own friendship groups as well as people within the business community because I firmly believe it's really important for people to have um, a variety of different asset classes. And while we're not giving any investment advice or financial advice, I think it's a really, really exciting project to be part of. And some people, uh, will be able to invest the larger amounts and other people might even just be able to invest the minimum, but it will still give you a really interesting uh, opportunity, a really exciting opportunity. And this is the only location-based social feedback platform that is actually empowered uh, with blockchain technology and other technologies in the back end. So it's super, super original and exciting. So pre-live incentives. So up until the, uh, the 14th of December, there are extra discounts that are being offered. So those that are um, interested in purchasing the minimum lot of 50 shares between one and nine lots attracts another 5% uh, bonus. 10 to 25, you get an 8% bonus and more than 25 lots is a 10% bonus. So that means you're actually getting an extra slice of shares for being uh, an early mover. And the way that the uh, that WISL is planning to allocate the funds, we can see it here. 48% um, will be given into uh, research and development. 26% is going to marketing and business development. 16% uh, to operating expenses, 2% to capital expenditure and 8% for other working capital. This is a really interesting slide and it basically shows how other tech platforms have grown over time. And it really shows the potential for Wizzle to, to be doing something similar. Uh, the, the figures really speak for themselves, but we can see that uh, Facebook, which was founded in 2004, has already gone up exponentially up, up till now in, in 2020. Did you want to speak a little about that one, Ken? Uh, yeah, so actually this is like, yeah, how, how the platform uh, potentially can grow far, right? You see, look at the uh, Facebook and so on. Actually, when they go to the BAP IPO, actually it's about like 8,000 over times, right? Recently, like Uber, they founded in 2009, 2009 and then, yeah, they just listed last year and then actually the, the, the potential, right? Then they can increase to like 6,000 over times. So, so, so do the like Airbnb. Uh, actually, they are going to list to this year, but uh, there's a bit of uh, interruption by the COVID uh, yes. and so on. So they delay the plan. So even though there's a, a, a grab, a grab also like one of the uh, a platform, they are yeah. doing very well. Okay, so they found that in 2012. And then uh, when, until now, so the valuation of the company is up to 14 billion. 
there wow. is still yet to uh, listen uh, to to IPO yet because I think they believe the the value is still going up uh, a yes. lot. Yeah. Wow. So actually, uh, we saw founded in two zero one eight, and now it's uh, two uh, year two two thousand two twenty. So actually, we are doing uh, equity crowdfunding for the early yes. seed, seed stage. Okay, so our valuation is similar to like twelve million at this moment. So uh, when we across the line, according to our roadmap and projection, yeah, so I believe we can uh, reach another milestone. Okay, yeah, to one uh, to IPO and some 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 day. So then get the at least like thousand times of uh, a potentially yeah. Exciting, and it's yeah, exciting return, to be yeah. part of a. It's, it's, it's very exciting to be part of a project that's, that's doing that work. Yeah, so this is what we believe, like the, how, how the platforms can be grown and so on, right? Via all the uh, 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 platform that we build and then slowly like run out, okay? So using our premium services, even those that will open up our service marketplace, so we can allow uh, people to uh, sell the products or services or even those plug-in, uh, we will open our API, and so on, so let other other solutions and plug in in our in our platform. Then mm -hmm. we just uh, get a commission cut on this. Uh. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Lots so of streams of income. Said. Yeah, Very sure. promising. All right. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we're looking at an, a social uh, a social feedback platform that is going to take uh, people from a feeling of pain to a feeling of pleasure, from frown to fan, from groan to great. <laughs> or, and I think the emojis say it all, like we're either having a, a terrible, frustrating time and none of our issues are getting resolved, or we, we finally find that somebody cares about us, they acknowledge what we say, they get things fixed, and we feel like we count. Our voice is heard. So here's our comf company information. The company is based in, uh, in KL, in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Malaysia, and yeah. um, that's the headquarters in, in Malaysia. Um, we have uh, a Malaysian telephone number there and an Australian telephone number if you'd like to get in touch. It's um, a wonderful organization and it's expanding across the world. So Southeast Asia next, where we're already uh, launched in Australia, or well, soft launched in Australia. Uh, we're very, very excited to be moving into those other countries and including Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. And it's, it's, it's all systems go. I'd like to uh, just quickly have a look here. So thank you very much for being part of the Whizzle story. We really urge you not to miss this opportunity uh, to be part of this resolution providing social feedback platform. It's something that is needed by everyone all over the world. All cultures and all different people experience problems that need to be fixed. And this Whizzle has the ability to be scaled right across from, a, from where it is now, where it's really, really flourishing and doing very well in Malaysia and, and starting to build in Australia. We have a chamber of commerce that's heavily involved in Loving Whistle. And it's easy to scale right across the world. So the growth could be potentially exponential. It's all about fixing unresolved problems. And it's a very good business because if you think about it, there are so many problems that need fixing and Whistle is, a, is an effective tool to do that. Uh, we'd like to invite you to join the Whistle story. We'd like to invite you to become a shareholder in our company. At this early stage, as we mentioned before, there are special bonuses up until the 14th of December. So we really urge you to get in touch with either the Australian office via this, uh, this uh, business address biz.au at whistle.com or the Malaysian address which is back here business at whistle.com and you can get in, in touch with us directly and we can provide further information for you. Thank you very much. I'm going to um, invite questions if we have any questions from anyone. Do, does anyone here have any questions they'd like to answer? I just need to get out of here and stop screen sharing. Any other questions? All right, I thought um, Kieran had a question, but I don't know that he's got his hand up at this point. All right, well, I've, I had a couple of other questions that came in. I'm gonna mute myself and um, take pass these over to Julia. So Julia, how about I ask the question and then I'll mute, okay? All right, so the first question is, uh, why is Whizzle different to other social platforms? 
Um, yes, so I think lots of that, that more or less got already covered in the presentation. Um, I think, um, again, Whistle is not a social media platform only, um, but the main difference is um, what I would uh, say the, the reach, and it's more about customer engagement uh, and retargeting and, and, and letting them feel good once you have them in your network and not so much about lead generation like most of the others. So um, if you have, uh, for example, a Facebook page people are following, uh, your reach is very small, uh, like very low. Whether with Whistle, um, if you bring them into your community and you use your announcement tool to make an announcement, to let them know what's happening, um, then you have 100% reach. They receive a push notification on their phone and um, they don't need to follow you. They're being followed, <laughs> basically. Um, and I think, yes, yeah, so that is a very, very strong um, community engagement tool. And then, of course, the, with the business management systems in the back, um, you, you, can, you combine, basically, the business side of things with the social side of things. And that, that's a big difference. Thank you. You mentioned, um, well, we're obviously all going through uh, some challenges, let's say that, with the COVID-19. And recently in WA and Western Australia, there was a tracking system that's been introduced by um, the state government. Is, can you talk about the, whether uh, the WISL, uh, so WISL, WISL has a visitor management system. Can you talk about whether that's actually compliant with the West Australian model, Julia? Yes, absolutely. Um, the main difference is basically that you can use a QR code, uh, place it somewhere, people scan it, but they don't have to download an app. So in order for you to, to track your visitors to come along, the system saves the date, the time, the location, um, timestamp, and then you can create a form and you can um, ask what you want to ask them on, on that form. So, um, for example, name, phone number, email, um, but also are they, for example, an active member or a customer or whatsoever. Um, and, and you store this information in your own back office. And only if you decide to share it or if you are asked to share it, only then you're actually sending out this information with one click via email. Um, you, can, you can receive that in an uh, Excel form, basically. So it's uh, very good um, uh, for, for management of the data you're actually collecting. And you don't force the people to download an app, which they maybe don't want, but at the same time, you don't have any paperwork. So that is the main difference. But all the information you have to, connect, uh, to collect, you can collect. And it's a really interesting one, the whole idea of not having to use a pen and paper as well, because there was all this, I mean, I know with the government app now that that's the same thing, but certainly earlier in the year, it made us giggle where you um, all use the same pen to write down your name and address. There was all these masks and distancing, but you know, hey, the pen's different. All right. Um, it can be really hard to get surveys answered or to get feedback from people when you actually want feedback. So sometimes people end up paying a whole heap of money to get that done and to get to engage services. Can you talk a little bit about whether Whizzle has any um, tools to make getting the feedback easier for businesses? Yes, so I mean, uh, one tool is of course uh, the uh, transparent uh, post in, in the community as a, a feedback where then let's say the property manager immediately receives a push notification on the phone um, that there's something wrong and they can take action. Another way to get feedback is um, by using, um, for example, uh, the QR code instead of it's uh, a QR code that people just scan and you create a feedback form right in the checkout process. So um, I noticed that usually if you send them a link separate most people don't fill out the form but using the whistle checkout system if you have 
your questionnaire prepared immediately in this process and they can answer this question very simple on their phone uh, and it only takes one, two minutes for them to fill out. Um, you, you, you get a 100% um, feedback uh, reply basically. And um, that is a very powerful tool and that is um, also uh, direct feedback. So this, that's not transparent feedback. So some people like to um, use whistle for the transparency and others would like to be more um, still like uh, direct with the, the person who's receiving the form. So we, we offer both tools. It's a matter of how the property manager, for example, is using it. So you gave an example in that case of using a feedback form in a property management situation, but I can imagine if you're running events or if you've got classes or if you're running conferences, often you want to get people to say, oh, you know, oh, it was an amazing class because you can use that as a testimonial and you can use it on your website with their permission. So wouldn't that be an awesome way also for feedback forms to be uh, implemented, not just, well, not just, I mean, there are so many, so many times when we actually need and want people's feedback, positive and negative. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a perfect use case for that as well. Like if you have an event or a training session, education or whatsoever, just get it done there. Um, another really powerful thing, what you can do with, with let's say you have 10,000 people in your community, uh, you can have a, a million people in your community, you know, you can build it as big, big as you want. You can use then the announcement feature um, where you have 100% announcement. Remember, you, you we send a push notification straight to, uh, to, to the people's phone. And then you um, create a form in the business management back office that can be any form that can be, for example, yes, a survey form or that can be like a customer application form. And you, you combine that with the announcement tool, you attach it and the people receive that form straight on the mobile phone straight on, on, on the, that push notification. And that is very, the open rate of those um, push notifications is just much, much higher than sending out emails which are ending up in spam and where we know that, uh, I mean, industry specific, but for example, in the automotive industry, we have a 14% opening rate of emails. So you don't, you don't uh, reach your people with the old marketing methods because they're spam, whether with push notifications you receive, that they receive. So it's a very powerful way um, what you can do with Whistle, not only in customer engagement, also in marketing, and also, and very important, in health and safety, in emergency situations and things like that. It, uh, it, it's absolutely true. There are so many applications of, of Whistle outside of the property management. We get all excited and we want to talk about all of them, but we'll we'll leave it there for now. Um, as closing words, Ken, can I invite you to talk a little bit about the roadmap, Whistle's roadmap and what's next? I mean, I know you could probably talk for an hour about that, but can you wrap something up in a <laughs> short time? Yeah, uh, maybe yeah, some, something uh, more, more simple, right? I think, yeah, down to the roadmap, right, then, uh, definitely, we will uh, implement our reward system. So the reward okay. system, yeah, yes. Yes, yes. And also, uh, then we will make the feedback flow uh, much more easier, such as we enhance, uh, allow user to give a voice or video feedback. Oh, okay. Right? So instead of just yeah. writing it, you can make a, a video uh, or uh, yes, do it because, in different ways. Yeah, some, sometimes like 15 seconds or 30 seconds videos can tell like hundred more than hundred words, right? Yes, do, right? perfect. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. So yeah, the at short the same, videos. Hmm, yeah, at the same time, sure. Uh, we will like expand to others country that you previously uh, mentioned. Uh -huh. and then, so the expansion yeah, overseas. Yeah, yeah. Then next year, then we will get the service market press ready and so on, right? Then we will slowly implement those AI, uh, uh, AI content filtering system, okay? To, to so that's the artificial the, intelligence? Ah, uh, yes, filtering. yes, okay. correct, correct. And then sooner, then we will open up uh, the API, uh, allows uh, more uh, partners and uh, 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 services or solutions to provide uh, their service or solution across the platform. Okay. All right, so the APIs, so that's providing, so it, are they the service, is that like the service marketplace or is that something different again? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a part of your service marketplace. It's part of that, okay, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So Other basically than, we're just going to go from strength to strength. 
uh, yes, this is how the platform grows, right? Then uh, the, the business will be uh, expanding from uh, B2B, business to business, until the business uh, to uh, B2B to C, right? Then we from end up business the business to consumer. Okay. Yeah, then, then that's why when you look at the, uh, the overview of our business model, right? Then we'll be ultimate, we'll go to the advertisement. Uh, or to advertisements and other, yes, other ways of correct. other yeah, streams yeah. of income. Yeah, yeah, because all the when the, all the users on board and the business owner is here uh, providing their service or, or 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 doing their business. So I think the featured service and all this will be the must. Okay, right? Somebody want to feature my products or feature my soft uh, solutions or feature my services. Excellent, right? excellent. Yeah. Then once you open the API in future, even those like those uh, smart cities uh, solutions and so on, they are all welcome like, to build a biggest alliance. Okay. Mm -hmm. to, so to create that, alliances yeah. with other organizations yes. doing smart city work. Sure. Yes. Yeah. And at the same time, also we leverage with all this kind of uh, uh, big platform, like international platform, for example, ah, Microsoft. Okay, so, so leveraging Azure, from that collaboration. Uh, yes, like for example, Microsoft and Geo Marketplace, yes. right, to reach all the SME. Uh, maybe yes. I can share a little bit on the SME markets in uh, Malaysia. Okay, so there's about like 900,000 SME in, in Malaysia. Okay, let's say I just put like one percent market penetration. Okay, to uh, get them on board into the visa. Okay, yes. Pro providing them a wonderful full uh, tools uh, to digitalize and also like collecting feedbacks or improve their business. Okay, start to digitalize their data and so on. Right. So, All right. So, so sorry. How many small businesses did you say in Malaysia? Uh, nine nine hundred thousand is like nine hundred thousand. And yeah, so, if you were 000. to if you were to get market saturation of one percent, yeah, just say like okay, the, for to the, improve for their next, business. Yeah, next one year, okay, we target yes. to get one percent of the business yeah. owner uh, will be like nine thousand uh, business owners or, or uh, nine thousand SMEs. Yes, right? nine thousand yeah, so, and their communities. Yeah. Yes, okay, so actually we do have a very uh, uh, comfortable price, I mean like consumable price, right? For the SME package, it costs cost about like 99 ringgit per right. month, right? I think most of the business owners are, are capable to afford yes. uh, and afford uh, to use this kind of system without uh, have a, like a, a IT knowledge, without the technicians, ah, without the so it's... servers and bandwidth and so on, okay? Without so a very... For a very yeah. reasonable subscription, they get access to all sorts of yeah. technological tools. Yeah, but that making the... it very easy with 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 the use of their phones. <laughs> yeah. correct. It's so the... they don't have to be tech heads. Yeah, yeah. correct. Right. Just like about like twenty five dollar US dollar mm, per month, right? Twenty five yeah. bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. but but you, you look at it right. If like now nine thousand SMEs are onboarded and paying you like uh, around. Uh, 25, 25 bucks, right? yeah, it's talking 25 about US like, a month. That's good. yeah, it's about <laughs> like 25, uh, 250,000 US dollar per month revenue for your subscription basis. Fantastic. This is just like one of the uh premium service that we provided, okay? To yes, the SMEs, and everyone can find it useful and uh, affordable, right? Absolutely. And if you think about it, shareholders are instantly going to be seeing. A positive experience, you know, as part of the whistle, being part of the whistle background team, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very, it's a very positive outlook for whistle in terms of their yeah. shareholding. Yes, team. and also this is only Malaysia market, right? When exactly. About the exactly. Other, so, yeah, countries, I know. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ken. That's yeah, that's really sure. inspiring. Thank yeah, you, sure, Julia. Sure. Is there anything you want to add before we finish? Oh, she's giving me the, the no thanks. Okay, great. All right. Well, I, would, I wish to thank all of you for being here tonight. I'm, I believe we're out on Facebook Live on a couple of different platforms. We would like to also thank the Pitch In team. Um, they have uh, helped to create this uh, event tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And all of you who've come along to listen, we urge you to be part of the Whistle story. It's very exciting and we're really thrilled to be working with this organization and thrilled to be uh, able to speak very highly of what they've done to date and what they're going to be doing in the future. Mm. So get in touch with Julia or myself or Ken. There's all yeah. sorts of different ways of reaching out and yeah. we will uh, we'd, we'll look forward to being able to speak to you in person if you have more questions. All right, thank you. Okay, take care. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.